grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration from Ephesians chapter 5. My dear Christian friend, be careful how you live your life. God's advice to you. Be careful how you live, not as an unwise, but a wise person. You know, we've heard this warning to be careful quite often throughout our lives, have we not? Usually we hear it quite often when we're very small. Our moms and dads yell out to us to be careful. We wander too close to the water's edge or too close to the road. Be careful, the cry rings out. Our babysitters and our teachers, all making sure that we are safe under their care, cry out, be careful, as we're around outlets and other things. We are very used to that. And when we were younger, we could hear this warning and understand it quite well because the world is so big and we were so little. But as we begin to grow older, all of a sudden, our ability to think of those words, to be careful, they kind of lose a bit of their power because as we grow, we make more decisions and we are tempted more by this world and we are tempted to think that foolish and unwise decisions are fun riveting, exciting. This is how we live our lives. This is how we go about in exploring ourselves. And sadly, when we were young, we had moms and dads and elders watching over us. When we're old, if someone does say something to us, our normal reaction is usually to shrug our shoulders and say, I'm a big boy. I don't have to listen to you. And so where do we turn? We must turn to the authority. For it is not the advice of a mother or a father, but it is the advice of the Lord God himself to you and to me to be careful, to live your life not unwisely, but wisely, guided by the Lord's will, not the world's will, and then when you see this transformation of the faith living in you take place, all of a sudden now everything is something you can give thanks to the Lord God Almighty for. Our lesson from Ephesians chapter 5 is part of a very large section which the Apostle Paul, by inspiration, is telling his listeners to live as children of the Heavenly Father. Live as children of the light. His advice for his audience is twofold. First of all, in order to live as a child of the light, you must be imitators of God throughout your life in what you do and what you say and how you do things. Imitate God himself. And secondly, if you want to be a child of the light, then you have to shed the darkness. For the darkness is not who you are anymore. Shut it away and live in the light of faith that you so richly have in Christ Jesus. And so the Apostle Paul, at the culmination of this entire section in chapter 5, comes to this section about how to live as a child of the light, and he begins by saying, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. If you were to go out and ask a bunch of adults, what is the good life? My guess is that many of them would come back and they would have probably a concoction of alcohol and loose living. 
And so the Apostle Paul tells us today that it, that is indeed what the world grasps as the good life, drunkenness and debauchery. Now, we live in a state where these words are very important. Sadly, every single year, a magazine comes out with the top 10 drunkest cities in the entire United States. Wisconsin holds 60% of that top 10 list. My hometown is either number one, two, or three, it seems, year after year. And what do we do? We look at this list, and there's a part of us that says, well, all right, that's pretty cool. I have friends on Facebook posting that Appleton makes the top three, and they're like, hey, hey, look at this. They wear it as a badge of honor, like, we got something right. We follow the world's will, and this is what we think. This is what the good life is, isn't it? The good life is to live Friday and Saturday as wildly as we possibly can, then recuperate on Sunday and then show up for work on Monday. That is what the world would have you believe is the good life. The good life is looking at the things of this world and embracing them, to look at the sins of this world as the greatest things ever, and that is exactly what our sinful nature grasps onto. We look at the problems that we have in this life, the excessive abuse of alcoholism within our own lives, within our own town, within our own state, and we realize we are fools. We are absolute fools making unwise decisions, and we are not following the Lord's will, but we are following the world's will. We would much rather blend in be a part of the crowd, be a partier, than to stick out and to say no. We would much rather be part of the crowd that is accepted than the ones that are shunned and said, oh, you don't want to do that around him. He doesn't, he doesn't take part in those types of activities. The wise life versus the good life, they square off right here in our life. Which one calls out to you? Which one do you want to live? Which one do you need to live? If we follow the Lord's will, we understand the choice is to live the wise life. The problem, however, is that we have such great difficulty in living it and understanding it. You see, the Lord reveals his will to us in this entire section in Ephesians, we know what, it's, what, what we are to do. We know we are to imitate God. We know we are to live as children of the light. We know we are to shed these sins and not have a part of them anymore. But Satan, in his own wily ways, comes to us and tells us, but you've already messed up big time, buddy. You have made so many mistakes and you have lived the good life for so long that there's no hope for you. So you might as well just concede and live the good life for it's not all that bad anyways. You see that lie that Satan peddles to us is that lie which has us think that God is not great enough to conquer our greatest sins. It is that lie that makes us think that God is not capable of forgiving the plethora of all the sins that we have ever committed. But that's just not true. The Lord shows us that you have the forgiveness of God and that the guilt that overwhelms your conscience, the guilt that you struggle with and wrestle with, that he is the one who wants to rescue you from that guilt. We just have to let that guilt go and leave it at the foot of the cross. We have to see then what Christ did for us. Christ did not come into this world just to live. Christ came into this world so that he could die. 
And when he came into this world to die, he did so so that his blood would cover over and wash our sins away completely. You see, and then the neat thing about what God does for us is the transformation that he makes in our hearts. It's that the grace of God leads us to say three simple but important words. I am sorry. I have sinned. I have fallen short of the glory of God. I need a Savior. Thanks be to Christ Jesus that he has rescued us from our sins, that he has shed his blood for us on the cross, that he has removed our guilt forever, that he has covered us completely. As far as the east is from the west, our sins have been removed from us. And so as repentant children of God, we are now capable of living the wise life. And we fight against the temptations of the good life. And we realize now I am guided by the will of the Lord, not the will of the world. And this has a change that takes place in our minds, which all of a sudden now, everything, literally everything that goes on in our lives, we can give thanks to God. Notice the transformation that the Apostle Paul puts into words. He says, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul shows us this change makes us completely different. If you would go around and you would listen to how people talk in our world today, it's not too flattering, is it? You hear the words that people use, and you, you hear what they say, and you almost cringe sometimes because you feel as if you might be off in a Navy shipyard or someplace where this was once okay. But the Lord actually encourages us that as part of the wise life, as part of the wise life, we can live according to the Lord's will, and then the words that come out of our mouth, that they should be equal to the words that you read in His Word that they should be the same as the psalms and the hymns and the word of God itself. And then the Lord encourages us with something ingenious. He says, make music in your heart to the Lord. Why is that ingenious? Because what is in here comes out here. What is in our hearts comes and flows from our lips. And so if we have the word of God dwelling richly within our hearts, if we have the hymns of God being sung within our hearts, it comes out of our mouths, and we are able to then share that word and those praises to God with others. Then the Apostle Paul says something that is truly difficult for us as we live in this lifetime to understand. Give thanks to the Lord for everything. In our lives, there are times when I'm sure that you're thinking, I'm supposed to give thanks to God for this? That doesn't make any sense. This is horrible. What's going on in my life is just brutal. I, I, I don't see how I could give thanks to God in this. But again, you, you see what happens as a child of God in an entirely different light. You can see how God does indeed, as he has promised, work these things out for you. You can see, as God has promised, that he will be there for you that he will walk beside you, that he'll never leave you. And so you see, even when the most horrific things take place, whether it is sickness that you must deal with or sickness that a loved one is dealing with, whether it is the death of a family member, whether it is the hardships of work, whether it is the things of this life, no matter what it is, as Christians, we can turn to the Lord and give him thanks. Because even though the things go on in our lives, it never changes God's promise to us. That he is there for us. He is watching over us. And his promise to us that we can take hold of is that no matter what, it's going to be okay. The wise life versus the good life. 
Live according to the Lord's will, not the world's will. Give thanks to the Lord in everything. So my friends, be careful. Be careful how you live your lives. In a town of 14,000 people, you are known. People see you. They know you. They know where you go to church. They know where you send your children to school. So be an example. Live as a child of the light. Be imitators of the Lord God Almighty. Show this community that you are guided by the Lord's will, not the world's will. Show them what it means that as a Christian we can give thanks to the Lord God in everything. My friends, live the wise life. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.